Who's a good boy, Cheeseburger? Yes, you are, big fluffy teddy bear. Cheeseburger is best companion ever, period. Only you. Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. So I've played Far Cry 5. Full disclosure, I've never played any of the mainline Far Cry games before. The only experience I've had with the Far Cry series was Far Cry Free Blood Dragon, and that game was an awesome spin-off. I loved Blood Dragon, and Blood Dragon was the only Far Cry game I was ever interested in. I never really had any curiosity in the original Far Cry Free or its sequel, Far Cry 4. Even though they certainly look like competent, well-made, open-world first-person shooter video games, they just never really enticed me enough to go out and buy them and play them. But then Far Cry 5 was announced and revealed last year. And even after extensively playing the game, I've never been really able to pin down what exactly it was about Far Cry 5 that caught my eye. Maybe it was the setting and premise? Maybe it was the atmosphere and the subtle changes to gameplay? Again, I can't pin it down. All I know is when Far Cry 5 was first announced and revealed, it caught my eye, it got my attention. I started to follow the game, and as more and more advertisements and more and more information on the game came out, it became one of my most anticipated video games of this year 2018. So Far Cry 5, excluding me having played Blood Dragon, would be my first real Far Cry video game experience. My first mainline Far Cry game. And I have to say, after finally playing and beating Far Cry 5, I was not disappointed. I love this game. I love Far Cry 5. And while the game is not perfect, it has its fair share of flaws. For the most part, however, I have way more to praise and celebrate than to complain about. Keep in mind, however, your own personal opinion and biases when it comes to Far Cry 5 is greatly going to be influenced as to whether or not you've played the previous Far Cry video games, and whether or not you liked or disliked the previous Far Cry games. Again, for me personally, outside of Blood Dragon, I haven't played any other Far Cry games, so that's greatly going to influence my perception of Far Cry 5. But with all that preamble, out of the way, let me share with you my thoughts, feelings, and opinions on Far Cry 5, first starting with the positives and the things I really liked, and then moving on to the flaws and more negative aspects of the game. First up, I want to talk about the graphics and visuals of Far Cry 5. They're perfect. No, seriously, analyzing the graphics and visuals of Far Cry 5? I can't find a single thing to criticize. The game looks absolutely beautiful. Whether it's the remarkably well-detailed texture work on the environments, objects, and characters, to the absolutely stellar lighting and shadows, to the various well-done particle effects, the fire, the smoke, god damn, this game just looks so beautiful. There were so many moments throughout my first playthrough of Far Cry 5 where I just had to stop and stare at the environment. Developer Ubisoft Montreal's recreation of Montana via the fictional Hope County is one of the most beautiful, breathtaking, jaw-dropping, open-world environments I've ever had the pleasure of exploring and experiencing in a video game. But not only is Far Cry 5 top-notch in terms of graphical fidelity and visuals, but also in terms of optimization, at least on my PC rig. I was getting 60 plus FPS on max settings. The game is really well optimized. And in my 30 plus hours of playing the game, I only experienced one crash. So as a PC gamer looking at the more technical side of things, I am very, very happy on how well crafted Far Cry 5 is on that front. Now, I don't usually mention music when I review video games. I rarely ever bring it up unless I find it to be pretty good. Far Cry 5 has one of the best and now one of my most favorite video game soundtracks of all time. I love, I adore the music in this game. Whether it's the main menu theme, the music that plays while you're browsing your inventory, or the various songs that play when you get into and drive around in vehicles, and the music that plays during certain cutscenes and boss fights, story moments and side missions, the music just always fits perfectly, either having an additional, deeper, emotional impact and response from me, or making certain scenarios just all the more enjoyable and badass or hilarious. I love the music in Far Cry 5, it's so really well done and adds so much to the experience. Up next, I want to talk about the story and characters. You play as the Deputy, also known as Rook. 
Being part of a joint operation between the United States Marshals and the County Sheriff Department, you go to Hope County, Montana, where a cult known as the Project at Eden's Gate, whose members are nicknamed Peggy's, has risen to power, led by the charismatic Joseph Seed, whom they call the Father. You go to arrest the Father, but that doesn't go so well. Soon after, you meet with a man named Dutch, who acts as your advisor and helps explain the situation to you. And after a few tutorial missions on a small island, you are set loose to go wherever and do whatever you want in the open world of Hope County, Montana. Now, Hope County is spread out into three regions, each of those regions being controlled by one of Joseph Seed's siblings, his brothers, John and Jacob, and his sister, Faith. And you are free to tackle the game and its story in whatever order you choose. You are not restricted to one region at any time. You can go wherever, whenever you want. True open world freedom. However, Far Cry 5, through its design and character dialogue, heavily implies that you should do John's region first. I did John's region first in my first playthrough, and both from a narrative and gameplay perspective, I both prefer and recommend starting in John's region. Now, what I really like about Far Cry 5's story, especially when it comes to this being an open world video game, is how natural it is. It's not strict and linear and forced upon you. As you just play the game, explore the environment, liberate outposts from the cult, and recruit specialist companion characters, cutscenes will play at certain intervals, you'll talk with NPCs, and after you cause enough chaos and damage to the cult, the leader of that region will actively attempt to kidnap you, prompting you into a cutscene and story mission. I really enjoyed and appreciated this unique form of storytelling in an open world environment. It really made me feel more attached to the world and characters, and give me the feeling like I was actually having an effect and change on this world. Having to initiate dialogue with the main characters and random civilians, to unlock more story and side missions, and not just having them statically and literally unlock one after the other after you complete previous stories and side missions was refreshing and made the characters and world feel alive and organic. So I really liked the way the story was told and presented. As for the story and characters themselves, well, each of the separate stories concerning the different regions and the different cult leaders have strong yet somewhat predictable story arcs. While there was a twist here and there in each of the region arc stories that certainly did impress me, this is by no means a deep, complex narrative. But what Far Cry 5's narrative, and specifically its characters, did the best was getting me to care and feel, to feel something emotionally. Scenes that were meant to make the player feel intense made me feel intense. Scenes that were meant to make the player feel sad made me feel sad. And scenes that were supposed to make the player feel uplifted, happy, excited, did all that for me. I really genuinely grew to care about these characters. Dutch, Mary May, Pastor Jerome, Eli, Tammy, Weedy, the Sheriff, Tracy, Virgil. Oh, and your companion characters who will also talk and interact with each other. Nick, Grace, Herc, Jess, and all the rest. All of these characters are so well acted and brought to life, and all memorable in their own unique way. Especially the villains. Oh my goodness, the villains. John, Jacob, Faith, and Joseph. Joseph Seed, the father, becoming one of my favorite video game villains of all time. These characters are so well acted, and despite them being villains and performing horrific actions, the game, for me at least, did a great job at making me empathize with these villains. Having a kind of love-hate relationship with them. They're doing horrible shit, you gotta take them down, but they weren't always this way. It's not entirely their fault, and from their point of view, they don't really mean to do bad. Great villains, great characters, loved them. While the story, the narrative, the plot is nothing mind-blowing, it gets the job done in pushing the player forward, got me to really care about the characters, and there were moments and situations that actually had me questioning the morals. Who has the moral high ground if there is one at all in this chaos? But now we come to the most important feature and aspect of any video game, the gameplay. And I loved Far Cry 5's gameplay. In terms of this game being an open-world first-person shooter, I think Far Cry 5 nailed the format and formula. First off, the controls and movement feels great, smooth, responsive. Never felt like I was fighting the controls to do what I want to do. Being able to climb and mantle on and over almost any object and building in the environment looks good, feels good, allows for individual player expression as well as a variety of tactics, options, and strategies. And when it comes to the combat gameplay, the gunplay, Far Cry 5 feels great to play. Weapons have the right amount of power 
power and impact behind them. There's a great amount of finesse and detail to make the shooting feel just right. There's also great variety in terms to how you approach combat. There's a great deal of options into how you kill all these cultists. Of course, you have the standard guns blazing routine, and there's a solid variety of weaponry to choose from, from assault rifles to SMGs, shotguns, LMGs, sniper rifles, and a few special weapons. So all the basic playstyles in terms of gunplay are covered, but there's also a great variety of options when it comes to stealth. If you want to take out your enemies quietly without setting off an alarm, you have the very satisfying to use bows. It really does feel great to kill stuff with the bow, whether it's cultists or animals. Seeing the arrows stick out from where you shot them, and spurts of blood pouring out from where the arrow was stuck in, looks and feels really good, man. But more options when it comes to stealth, including throwing empty cans to cause a distraction, and lure enemies away or towards you, to throwing knives, to putting silencers on your guns, and there's even specific specialist companions that you can recruit who focus on stealth. From the lovable dog Boomer, who spots and marks enemies for you, to the cutie cougar Peaches, who can perform stealthy melee takedowns for you, to the smokin' archer Jess Black. It's awesome tracking down a Peggy hunting party, taking them out one by one. Gives me a serious hard on. Fuck me, she's so goddamn hot. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, there's great options and variety in terms of the gameplay. Outside of a few specific story missions that force you into combat, the vast majority of the gameplay is player choice and how you want to engage. Especially and specifically when it comes to the outposts. While outposts are infamous in the Far Cry series, outposts are also a staple of open world games in general. Enemy locations and bases that you need to clear out. And in my opinion, the outposts in Far Cry 5 are where its gameplay formula and format thrive. Taking on different outposts with different weapons, with different approaches to taking out enemies, whether it be guns blazing or combat, taking on the outpost solo or with companions. Clearing out outposts in Far Cry 5 was a lot of fun to me. I also really liked the added touch of every time you liberate an outpost from the cult, a unique cutscene plays of the civilians moving in, cleaning it up, and making it their own. Again, really made me feel like I was having an impact and influence on this world. Oh man, and there's so much more to talk about. Like the huge variety of vehicles, cars, trucks, boats, planes, which not only help make exploring and traversing the open world fun, fast, and convenient, but also allow for vehicle combat and a variety of carnage and chaos on that side. Ah oh, yes, the explosions! Everything in this game blows up! And you have a great variety of explosives to use to help blow things up. Dynamite, grenades, C4, molotovs, rocket launchers, oh my god, there's so many explosions. In every play session I had with Far Cry 5, there was always at least one explosion, whether it was caused by me or dynamically in the environment. You see, I love action movies, I love action video games, and Far Cry 5 absolutely scratches that action movie, action video game itch for me. This is one of the most action-packed open-world first-person shooter games I've ever played. Just the constant gunfire and explosions when you encounter cultists. It looks good and it feels good. Also, there's so many crazy and wacky side missions. While the main storyline takes itself fairly seriously, I loved how the side missions were more lighthearted and crazy and kooky and wacky. The developers obviously had a lot of fun creating these story missions and trying to make them as entertaining, as goofy, as energetic as possible. There's some really creative premises for these side missions. I also really enjoyed the side activities, specifically hunting and fishing. It was surprisingly really peaceful, really relaxing finding a lake, river, or stream, and just fishing in Far Cry 5. Fishing was surprisingly relaxing and satisfying. I really enjoyed fishing. Hunting can also be an intense and fun affair, whether you're taking a bow or a sniper rifle, trying to sneak up and get as close to your animal prey as possible before lining up your shot, and oh no, it's running away, now I have to go chase after it. I also really liked how the different predator animals would also dynamically engage with you and the NPCs and your enemies. You could be in the middle of a side mission or trying to take over an outpost when all of a sudden a bear, a cougar, a wolverine, or even a skunk comes in and starts fucking shit up. It's good, crazy chaos, and it shows off the unique sandbox experience that Far Cry 5 can provide. And that only expands and grows with the progression system, the perks you can unlock. You unlock perks with perk points, and you unlock perk points by completing challenges, and these challenges really encourage you to try different things. To use different weapons and tactics, bring along different companions, hunt animals. And the perks you can unlock are actually really useful and really expand the gameplay. 
You can lock a grappling hook, which gives you even more options for traversing the environment. I really enjoyed the grappling hook mechanic. It looks and feels good, and same goes for the wingsuit you can unlock as a perk. The wingsuit helping you fly across the county without the need for a plane. Again, it looks good, it feels good, it helps you traverse the environment in a variety of different ways. Combos with a parachute you can unlock. You can unlock upgrades to carry more weapons, more ammo, sabotage vehicles, make more money, and so much more. I really liked the progression system and the perk system in Far Cry 5. I think it was great. It was a great motivator to keep playing and experiment. Oh, and there's so much more to talk about. Far Cry 5 is such a huge game with so many systems and features. But I'm gonna list one more positive and one more thing I really like about Far Cry 5 before I move into more negatives and criticisms I have for the game. And the last positive thing that I really like about Far Cry 5, and this is a big one in its entire game mode actually, and that's Far Cry Arcade. Far Cry Arcade is a map and level editor in the same vein as Doom Snap Map, Halo Forge, alongside it being Far Cry 5's main PvP component. And Far Cry Far Cry Arcade is fan friggin tastic and provides infinite replay value to Far Cry 5 and adds so much value to it as a product. User generated content baby! Being able to create your own single player and co-op levels, PvP multiplayer maps, there's literally no limit to what you can do, what you can make, what you can play in Far Cry Arcade. Far Cry Arcade is fantastic and immensely pro-consumer. I mean you're already getting a massive amount of content with the base game. The base Far Cry 5 open world and story campaign, but adding Far Cry Arcade on top of that? Just absolutely brilliant, absolutely fantastic, extra bonus points in my book. But now it's time for me to bring up my negatives and my criticisms towards Far Cry 5, because Far Cry 5 is not perfect, it has some problems, it has some flaws. One of the biggest being, only one save file? And not having New Game Plus? Not being able to replay the story or side missions whatsoever? What the fuck, Ubisoft? You have one save file, and that's it. Once you beat the story, the only way to replay it is to wipe your save file and start a new game. And there's no new game plus. What the hell? Why? Why do I have to sacrifice all my progress, all my unlocks, just to replay my favorite story missions? Or rewatch some of those gorgeous, well-directed, well-acted cutscenes? Again, why? I, d I don't get it, why? While it doesn't kill replayability by any means, it certainly does hurt it. And it does hurt basic player customization and choice. At the very least, once you liberate all the outposts in the game, you can reset the outposts. So the cult has control over them again, and you need to liberate them again. I mean, that's nice. That is some replayability, but why not just let us replay the story campaign? Why not give us New Game Plus? Just a bizarre lack of basic options and features. Another negative in criticism I have, well, this is an open world game, so expect some bugs and glitches. Granted, the bugs and glitches I encountered were minimal, but the ones I did get did at times hinder gameplay and were immersion breaking, where NPCs would stop talking in the middle of a conversation, or not have that conversation trigger at all period, and having to quit to main menu and resume game just to get them to talk, or restart a checkpoint, granted this was rare, but when it did happen, it was absolutely annoying. Also, doesn't matter what video game it is, if it has vehicles, something glitchy is going to happen with vehicles. Again, my personal experience, I didn't encounter that many bugs and glitches, but I did encounter a few, one of them being two vehicles vehicles clipping into one another and spazzing out. But again, sorry to sound like a broken record, my personal experience, I didn't encounter that many bugs and glitches, but there is proof. There's proof out there on the internet that Far Cry 5 can be. It has the possibility of being a buggy and glitchy game for some people. I was lucky. I was really lucky that the bugs and glitches I experienced were very minimal, very rare. But keep in mind, if you plan on buying and playing Far Cry 5, there is the possibility of bugs and glitches. It's an open world game. Personal player experience when it comes to those technical difficulties will vary. One thing I personally disliked about Far Cry 5 is how some weapons were legitimately just copy pastes of one another. There's a lot of weapons in Far Cry 5 that are legitimately the exact same gun, just with a different cosmetic look. Like, why even make that an individual weapon? Why not just make that an unlockable skin? Like, why? It makes Far Cry 5's arsenal look bigger than it really is, but there's no reason for it. Far Cry 5's arsenal is fine. There's a fine amount of pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper rifles. They don't need to artificially expand the arsenal. That design choice just confuses me. 
Lastly, I got to bring up and criticize the AI. It's all over the place. The AI overall, when it comes to your companions, when it comes to NPCs, when it comes to your enemies, ranges from hilariously stupid, what are you doing, to just competent. Again, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, it's just all over the place. The AI will do some strange things, there'll be some strange behavior, dumb behavior. A lot of it consisting of them not really being aware of their environment. And while it can be funny, it can be hilarious, it can also be immersion breaking. But again, this is going to vary from person to person, from player experience to player experience. In my first playthrough of Far Cry 5, the AI was competent for the most part. But they had their moments of, what are you doing? What are you doing? However, with all that being said, in conclusion, despite its flaws, I immensely enjoyed my time with Far Cry 5. I love this game. This is a game I'm going to come back to and remember fondly. I was satisfied with the story and characters, the gameplay is immensely fun and engaging, the graphics and music are equally beautiful, the open world environment of Hope County, Montana has become one of my favorites, and oh yeah, holy shit, I totally forgot about the microtransactions in this game. And let that be an example and a sign to how much the microtransactions actually affect or mean anything in Far Cry 5. If you're an absolute moral puritan when it comes to microtransactions in video games, don't worry about the microtransactions in Far Cry 5. They're completely worthless and useless. I don't even know why they're in the game. Ubisoft isn't going to make any money off them. No one's going to spend money on these microtransactions. They're absolutely worthless. They're not worth the time to be talked about. What is worth talking about, though, is the gameplay, the gunplay, the choices offered by the sandbox of Far Cry 5, the beautiful open world environment, the stellar music, and the memorable characters, and especially the villains, Joseph Seed, the father, becoming one of my favorites. So yeah, I love Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 is easily going to be in my top 10. Hell, my top 5 favorite video games of 2018. This is easily one of the best video games of 2018 for me, and Far Cry 5 has gotten me interested to play the older other Far Cry games, and see how they compare sequel to sequel. Far Cry 5 has made me a fan of Far Cry, and I couldn't be happier. Anyways guys, that's been a video. I hope you liked the video. If you did indeed like the video in any way, shape, or form, please be sure to hit the like button and the like button helps you help me, helps everybody involved in the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment in the comment section below. What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on Far Cry 5? What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on this video? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love reading comments to get nearly enough comments. If you want to help out and support this video, then please share it on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. If you want to help out and support me directly, well, there's always Patreon. Anyways guys, that's been a video, and I'll see you all later.